Hello friends, how are we doing? If you've been watching a lot of my videos lately, you'll be like, Megan, how are you home? I'm not home yet, but I'm pre-filming this because I knew I wanted to get this video up this month. So I'm pre-filming it for you. And it is a little murder mystery recommendation video. So a couple years ago, I did my favorite murder mystery books of all time, right? I did, <laughs> I did that video. And a lot of you ask me to do it again. They're like, oh, well, please tell us your favorite murder mysteries. I don't actually think that list has changed that much. I probably won't do it again for like another two years or so. But what I do now is every year I tell you the 10 best murder mysteries I have read in like the past year basically and that's what we're doing today it's been a year since I last did this video for the first time and we're doing it again so these are the 10 best murder mysteries I've read in the past year I gotta be honest with you out of this 10 there's only two five stars so do you think I deserve better than that yes the rest are like four stars, maybe there's one 3.5 in here, but they're all books I would recommend and I think you guys will really enjoy. But I have become too picky. It's gotten out of hand. I have become too picky with Mad Mysteries. I just, I expect so much. <laughs> So not only have I only read in the past year 10 Mad Mysteries I would really recommend, like only two of them are five stars. That's kind of sad, right guys? Where are the more? I just need murder mysteries. I just need more. Please give me more murder mystery wrecks. I need them. I need like 20 murder mystery wrecks. I need them. I need them. <laughs> oh, also I should say, the first seven are absolutely murder mysteries. They are murder mysteries. Murder mysteries. Absolutely. Then we've got three at the bottom that are like pushing it a bit. That maybe blend some genres. That maybe a reference murder mysteries but aren't quite one. You'll see. You'll see. <laughs> but the first seven are absolute murder mysteries and then the last three are like you know, skirting the lines of it. The first two ones I read when I read the top 10 nominees for the Goodreads Mystery Thriller category, there were other mysteries I would recommend from that video. For example, All the Sinners Bleed by S.A. Cosby, but it's not a murder mystery. It's not a murder mystery, so it's not making the list. You're not making the list if you're a missing person mystery. You're not making the list unless you're a murder mystery. So the first one is Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers by Jesse Satanto. This one is really fun. I really did enjoy this. It's a very lovely little murder mystery that I think pretty much you'd be hard pressed to not enjoy. So we're following Vera Wong, who is this self-proclaimed tea expert. She runs a little tea shop and she goes downstairs one morning and finds a dead body on the floor of her tea shop. Maybe the dead body has like a key piece of evidence in its hand and she's like, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. She's like, I'm gonna do a better job of solving this than the police. The police suck ass. So I'm gonna investigate this myself. And it's a story of her investigating this murder and meeting people who are related to this guy, people from his life, but then she becomes kind of like a found family with them. And I really enjoyed this. This is definitely verging more on like the cozy mystery side I would say and you know since the Thursday murder club which maybe we'll be getting into in a second there has been this massive trend of other murder mysteries following elderly characters investigating mysteries there's another one of these on this list as well there's like <laughs> they're everywhere it just annoys me that it's only murder mysteries I'd love older characters in fantasy or whatever but it just hasn't bled outside it's just like they apparently, they just think, oh, the only love old people when they're solving murder mysteries. That's not the case. Anyways, but I thought the writing in this was lovely. It felt very comforting. It felt very cozy. I really did enjoy it. And this was my first time with this author. I know this is the author of like Dahl A for aunties or I can never get the titles right. Four weddings, something to do with four weddings. Four aunties and a wedding. There we go. I, got, I always get it wrong. But yeah, I would really, really recommend this. I think the found family in it was done really well. There were some really beautiful moments between some of the characters. Um, this a four star for me but I would really recommend it. Then we have got one of the five stars. It is the last devil should I have Richard Osman. It was my favorite book of last year. <laughs> Not surprised to see it here. This is the fourth book in the Thursday Murder Club series aka one of my favorite series ever to exist. I love you Richard Osman, the man that you are. I think he's a genius. I would love you know those you know the question where it's like would you have a million dollars or dinner with Jay-Z? For me it's dinner with Richard Osman and I think I'd pick dinner with Richard Osman. I'm joking but like not. <laughs> I'm sure you all know what this series is about, but if you don't, we're following an elderly cast of characters at their retirement village as they solve murder mysteries. They previously had been trying to solve cold cases, hence the Thursday Murder Club. They'd meet up every Thursday and try to solve cold cases together. It was like a bit of fun, but then murders can't stop coming at them. I don't want to spoil anything for the previous books for you, but basically the group, an old friend in the antiques business has been killed and they kind of go on this path to find out why he was killed, what happened. This one definitely gets into like, drug smuggling as like a subplot, maybe a bit more espionage than some of the other books. So I thought the murder mystery in itself was really strong in this book, but a lot of the time in this book is also taken up with a very emotional subplot 
and it makes everyone cry and it makes us all emotional wrecks and Rich Dosman, oh, I can't believe he did this to us. <laughs> I haven't cried like this at a book in a long time. I'm so excited to reread this series at some point. But the thing that Rich Osman does is like he'll have you crying and then the next scene will be funny. These books are so funny. They have such humour and they have such an acute observation of human life right of what makes us tick of what makes us happy of the little things we talk about with our family I feel like a lot of books don't do this they don't highlight the small stuff right the small beauty that's in life and I really think that these books do I, I I cannot for me it's the most accurate and some of it is because it's British references and I very much relate to them but it's the most accurate representation of like just humanity I feel like I don't know it, it really Oh, I just think they're absolutely wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. And something also that I think is structurally great about these books is you have like three, often like three scenes happening simultaneously that you, there's very short chapters and you skip back and forth between them. So like you'll go between the three scenes and then a new scene will begin and then that one will end and then a new scene will begin and you're always swapping between scenes. And I think that keeps the pacing absolutely wonderfully. He, I've been speaking a lot about his podcast lately. I'm listening to the podcast that he does and he occasionally talks about the books. Often he's talking more about like his opinions on different pop culture events but um he spoke about how when he watches tv or movies he doesn't like when there's like an overhanging tense stressful issue like a I don't know how to explain it. He explained it much better than me. But like this really tense situation, he doesn't like when it lasts for too long. Like in TV and movies, he can't watch it if it's like we are stressed and worried about something for too long. So he says that's why in his books, everything is resolved fairly quickly. There's lots of little issues that all kind of like, we're worried and then it's resolved. We're worried and then it's, it's resolved. And I just think it's a wonderful reading experience. I know I, I've spoken about this book for quite a long time. We This video doesn't need to be 10 hours long, but I love, I love this book. I love it. <laughs> Literally, I am obsessed and I long to be in this show. Please make my dreams come true, someone that's watching this. And then we've got another Old People Murder Mystery book. I think this is the last one on the list. <laughs> They just happen to be the first three. Um, and that is The Marlowe Murder Club by Robert Thorogood. This one we're following Judith Potts, who's a little bit of an oddball. She's a little bit cray cray. Not cray cray, but she just like, she lives life her own way. She moves to the beat of her own drum, you know? She witnesses a brutal murder of her neighbour one evening. And at first the police are like, you weren't murdered, babes. He was not murdered. And she's like, okay, I've got to figure this out. And then there's like two unlikely friends that she meets over the course of this, who they kind of team up together to try and solve this murder. And I really did enjoy this. This is like a fun variation of old people serving murder mysteries basically i've read a lot of these they're everywhere i've tried out a lot of them a lot of them don't work for me but i really did enjoy the writing in this one i thought it was really well paced again i thought you know some murder mysteries i read nowadays there's like four scenes and it's really pissing me off like i read oh, the antique hunter's guide to murder which is coming out this year one of my most anticipated releases i got an arc of it there was three scenes there was three scenes in that entire book there was a lot of issues with that book but i think what this does well is it constantly was moving us and propelling us and going to different places I feel like that's what you need in a murder mystery. You need like pace to it, right? And I think this did it really well. All of these books where it's old characters talking murder mysteries, I do immediately compare it to the Thursday Murder Club and ultimately nothing will compare. But I did really enjoy this and I am going to continue on the series because I think it's a fun version of what it is. Then we have the first of two books in a series, some sequels that I've read that are on this list. This is A Very Lively Murder by Katie Watson. This is the sequel to The Three Dahlias. And basically the premise of these books is that there's this famous fictional detective called Dahlia Lively and we're following three women who who have played her in TV movies throughout the years, basically. And the first book is set at this fan convention, which is really, really fun. And they solve a murder there. And on this one, the youngest is filming her first Dahlia Lively movie. In the first book, she'd just been announced, but this one, she's filming her first movie. One of the elder Dahlia Livelies is in the movie as like a cameo, so she's there. And then people start dying. Uh, oh no, I think actually at first it seems that someone's trying to kill Rosalind, who's the older Dahlia Lively, who's in it as a cameo. So they call up the third Dahlia Lively to be like, come see us, we need your help. But then murders start happening. And I really enjoy these. These are definitely like a love letter to the genre. I think they contain a lot of fun tropes. I'm really enjoying seeing the relationships grow now that we're getting deeper into the series between these women. I think this is criminally underrated. Not a lot of people have read these books. And I picked the three Dahlias up in a bookshop in London completely by chance. I think it was in Goldsboro where they do a lot of like first editions of books. A lot of the more famous books were like way too expensive. I'm like, I can't buy that. Like there was a um, Illumine by J. Christoph and Amy Kaufman, first edition, like signed special edition, whatever. It was like 200 pounds. I was like, 
I don't have that kind of money. <laughs> the bitch is broke. It's not even gonna affect nobody. She ain't got no fucking money. I got the three dollars because it was like priced like a normal book. It was like 12, 14 pounds or something. It wasn't expensive. And I just picked it up and I was like, wow. This is so much fun. No one is reading these and I really think you guys should because this one was so fun. Look at the cover. Doesn't that just make you excited? I really love the cover for this one. It is a celebration of golden age crime and I thought again the mystery in this one worked really well. I really really enjoyed it. So this is I just think a really fun murder mystery series and I and quite a few of my patrons have started this series and they've all really enjoyed it and I just think it's fun. You're gonna have a fun time. Again it's a little bit cozy, a little bit comforting. I really enjoyed it so I'm excited for the series to continue. Then we have got Murder in the Family by Cara Hunter where I did an entire video trying to solve this book as I read it. Basically there's a murder that happened in 2003 and now there is a documentary being made and we read the book basically entirely through this the, the script of the, the TV documentary that's being made. They've brought together like six experts from different areas of like criminology to talk through the case and try to solve it as well as having interviews with the family members of this guy that was murdered. It's just I love a mixed media. I love mixed media. I will say my reading of this one, I gave it four stars, my reading of whenever I try to solve a book, whenever I do those videos, it's a very different reading experience to how I read normally and so I, I kind of view them as like a separate thing. Like I almost can't even rate them. Like when I'm reading a murder mystery normally, I let myself be taken along for the ride. I kind of don't really try to theorize. Whereas when I'm doing this, I'm not reading a book. I'm doing an investigation. It's completely different. So yeah, I almost can't compare it to anything else. But I think this is pretty successful in what it's trying to do. It's been super popular this year. And I think for good reason. I think the um, resolution of it was really, really good. And I just love mixed media. I love mixed media. It's a very different reading experience. You know, obviously it's, there's no description. It's all just a script format. But I think that it was always such a fun reading experience, especially if you haven't read a lot of them. You know, I think I mentioned True Crime Story in the video last year of this version. And I just think they're always a fun time. I just love mixed media. I'm a little bit of a sucker, okay? But, you know, I'm a simple girl. <laughs> Then we've got a, another sequel that I absolutely love. This is Death Beside the Seaside by T.E. Kinsey. This is, I think, is the seventh in the Lady Hardcastle Mystery Series. This is not the most recent one I've read, but it was the last one I gave five stars. And this one's just really fun. They go to, obviously this is very deep in the series, so like you don't need me recommending it to you, but I'm just gonna tell you, read Lady Hardcastle. Read the Lady Hardcastle Mystery Series, listen to the audiobooks, because it's the best way to enjoy them. Lady Hardcastle I made flow, solving murders. It's funny, it's lighthearted, favorite cozy mystery ever to exist. I love it. Listen to what I have to say, because I'm right. They basically go to this um, seaside, go on a seaside break, but then it ends up like raining <laughs> the entire time they're there. And then when they're there, they're staying in this like little hotel by the seaside and people start going missing slash maybe being murdered. And it's just a very fun book because you're in this hotel for the most part of it and you've got these very interesting little characters and they're all going down to dinner and like gossiping and like going, oh, what do you think's happening? I just really like the setting of this, of them in this hotel. I thought it was a very fun setting and I love it. And also I read this on the beach. I read this when me and Tom went to Portugal on holiday, we went just like for a beachside holiday. And um, I read this laying on the beach and it was such a fun, even though in the book they're like, they keep trying to go see the sea and whenever they go, the tide is out. <laughs> it was just fun reading a book about the seaside on the seaside. Do you know what I mean? That just is such a fun experience. <laughs> So yeah, I will recommend the Lady Hardcastle Mystery Series till the day I die. Go pick up the audiobooks because it's absolutely the best way to read it. Then we have got The Woman in the Library by Solari Gentile. I think this might be the only one on the list. I think I might give this a 3.5, but I rounded it up to a 4 on Goodreads. And I did enjoy this. And I think this is one that I would really recommend to a lot of other people. And I'd be really interested to see what other people think of it. So this one is always such a bitch to explain. So we've got a writer writing a murder mystery. And she's writing letters to a pen pal. And they're like talking about how good her murder mystery is and then we read the murder mystery that she's writing and in it we've got four people around a table who they're in Boston Public Library yeah and they hear a blood-curdling scream from outside in the library and a woman is found dead but then we find out that one of the people around that table is the murderer so it's like how could they possibly have done it if they're sitting at the table yada 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 it's a bit of a mystery I think my expectations of this set me up to fail a little bit. So I thought they were gonna be stuck in the library then, like it was gonna be locked down, no one's allowed to leave, and then we solve the murder mystery while they're there. It's not the case. It's like this book spans weeks, right? And they're all moving around the city, whatever. And I think this is very imaginative in what it does. This is definitely, if you're looking for a different kind of murder mystery, this would be my recommendation, because I think it's very, creative but I think sometimes when you do something this creative it can be a little bit difficult to stick the landing but 
I think it's something that I would recommend to a lot of you because I think it would be a fun reading experience. Does that make sense? It was just a little bit disappointing for me, but I'm gonna keep trying out Solara Gentil. A, because I love the UK covers of her books. It's not very often, especially for like mystery thrillers, that I prefer the UK covers to books. Often we're, they're so ugly. But ours slap. The pink one for the um, the mystery writer her release this year, I love as well. I love the style of these covers, like the kind of retro, like screaming woman. I love them. So this is one that's very unique. And I think it was a fun premise. It didn't quite stick landing for me, but I think it could for a lot of you. Okay, and then we get into the three that are pushing it a little bit in terms of being classed as murder mystery, but I think they technically are. So we've got The Only One Left by Riley Sager. A lot of people call this a thriller, but it technically is a murder mystery. We've got Lenora Hope, who everyone thinks is a mass murderer. Her entire family was killed however many years ago, like 40 years ago, 50 years ago, 60 years ago, I don't know. They were murdered and everyone thinks Laura Hope did it, but there was never enough evidence to prosecute her. And our main character is a live-in nurse and she gets assigned Lenora and she is trying to figure out what the truth is of what happened in the past. So she is, she is like, the, the definition of murder mystery is there's been a murder and you've got someone trying to solve it. That's what this is, right? But it also it kind of isn't. So I understand when someone would be like, this isn't a murder mystery, but I think if you're looking for like a thrillery murder mystery, this would be my recommendation. I really enjoyed this. I think this, I've read every Riley Sager book, right? Some are more successful than others. <laughs> This is not my favorite, but I think this is his best in terms of a lot of people are likely to enjoy it. I think, I think. I think this is like his most widely recommendable book. I think it's a lot of fun. I think it's paced really well. I don't think it's necessarily breaking the mold in terms of anything, but I think everyone could read this and pretty much enjoy it. I think it's been a really successful release for him. His past couple ones, like I preferred The House Across the Lake to this, but I can see why people don't like The House Across the Lake. Everyone doesn't like Survive the Night, rightly so. But um, <laughs> I can see why people have issues with House Across the Lake. I think it was better than this. I gave this four stars, I really did enjoy it. But I think this is like, sometimes as an author, you gotta publish a thriller that just like, is gonna appeal to the masses. And I think that's what this is. I really enjoyed the pacing of it. I enjoyed there's like, um, the nurse helps Lenora type out on a typewriter the story of what happened. And I enjoyed the twists and turns that happened with that. I think it's a really strong book from him. And I like his recent, since Survive the Night on Woods, I would say there's been like or maybe no home before dark that no, yeah, home before dark was before that since home before dark there's been a strong all of his books have like an element of like is it supernatural is there a supernatural twist to this or isn't there and sometimes he does do it and sometimes he doesn't right and so I think that's always a fun element now with his books where like he's playing with you he's playing in a traditional murder mystery right there should never be supernatural elements or you would know from the beginning if there was right because it doesn't make it fair play if like at the end you're like oh it's a ghost you know what I mean but I think the way he's doing it is very successful for me so I really enjoyed this one then we have got The Chateau by Jacqueline and Goldis. A lot of people would probably refer to this as a thriller, but it's basically a murder mystery. It's basically a whodunit. So these women are all invited by one of the women's, is it her grandmother? Yes. To their grandmother's like chateau in France. It's rich ass chateau, which they used to go on holiday to. They go there, the grandmother's acting a little bit suspicious, and then um, she's murdered. <laughs> Grandma's murdered, and it's maybe one of them. This one I can understand why not everyone loves it. It was a little bit of a uh, uh, controvert, not controversial, just like not widely loved book this year. But I really did enjoy this. I thought the French setting definitely had a bit of ooh la la about it. I, wow. Wow. I liked the drama. There was a lot of twists throughout it that really, I didn't catch who the murderer was, but there's, I think that with the twist you could, I think it is fair play. I think it has a level of sophistication I like. I like, I like a good murder mystery in like a sophisticated setting. I'm not gonna lie, like that's why I love Murder on the Orient Express. Like the idea of like being on the Orient Express. Like it's, it's an, it's an evocation of a, of a, of a feeling, of a moment, of an experience, right? I feel like murder mysteries are so camp, right? That's why I love them. They're so, you can really play it up right? And I love a setting that really brings the drama, that brings, it sets the stage, right? At the end of the day, murder mysteries are like plays, you know? I, I don't know if I'm making sense, but I, that's what I love about them. And I really think this book did that well. So I'm going to keep trying out Jacqueline Goldis. I can understand, I think this is, is this her debut? I feel like this was her debut and I can understand there were a few debut issues with it, but I'm excited to see it grow. 
and the author grow. And then the final one is really cheating because it's not a murder mystery, but it is, you know, paying homage to the genre. And it is your guide to not getting murdered in a quaint English village by Maureen Johnson and Jay Cooper. I love this. Actually, no, this was a five star as well. We had three five stars out of the 10. Apologies, apologies, apologies. So obviously this isn't a murder mystery. It's like a little, almost I class this as a graphic novel and it's taking the mick out of the genre, right? Because traditionally a lot of murder mysteries happen in a quaint English village. You know, Agatha Christie is very well known for that. So it's got like the village and it's got the settings and it's got ways to die and it's got the characters and it's so much fun. I love it. As someone who loves murder mysteries, this is like the perfect book. If you love murder mysteries, you need to get this book and read it. It's so much fun. It will take you like 20 minutes to read and I just love it. It just brings me joy. <laughs> I don't know, I love anything that like looks at a genre and takes the piss out of it, especially murder mystery because it's my favourite. And I just think this is so fun. And I think, like I said, murder mysteries are ridiculous at the end of the day. Like they're camp, they're, they're ridiculous, they're over the top. And so it's just rife for stuff to take the mick out of. <laughs> so I loved this. I cannot recommend it enough. You guys, if you love murder mysteries, you need to go pick this little, little book up. So there we have it. That is 10 murder mystery books that I think you need to read. Let me know if you've read any of these. And please, like I always say, please give me murder mystery recommendations. You're a girl needs them. I'm struggling out here. I need more five-star murder mysteries. It's not fair. Why can't I have more five-star murder mysteries? And also I feel like my TBR is not murder mystery heavy at the moment. I just need more. If I was to buy anything, maybe I need to put myself in a book buying ban for everything apart from murder mysteries. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you got to the end of the video, comment the drop of blood emoji and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye!